Uh, welcome to another brand new episode of The Fry with your host, Pride Ngoni, aka oh. Skies. And with me here today is uh, the recently elected SRC president for the University of Zimbabwe, uh, Alan Chipoyi. How are you, uh, my brother? I'm good, my brother. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. How is everything? Everything is okay. How's work? Our work is good. I'd like to first begin by congratulating you on your recent victory. And I, I, I'm pretty sure the election, you know, it, with everything that happened, this is a big moment for you. Very much true. Thank you for congratulating me. Uh, thank you. Th- thank you for representing us well. You know, it's it's um it's quite a it's quite a pleasure to live among people like you, as brave as you are. So I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure that um us and the rest of the University of Zimbabwe and the rest of the students in the country, we have so much to look forward from your tenure. You know, very much. Very okay. Much. So, um, to begin, can you start by telling us a bit about yourself and um, why you wanted this post and what it means for you to be elected as SRC president? Well, thank you. Uh, I believe uh, a lot more knows well about myself, but digging deep into who actually Alan Boy is, Alan Boy is a human rights defender, a student activist. Uh, who has been always passionate about saving the interests of the students, not only through being elected into office, but someone who had passion already before being elected into office to save the interests of the students. I do have a well-written record in the public domain in terms of the work that we've been doing before uh, being elected into office trying to save the interests of the students, not only the students, but citizens of the public of Zimbabwe as well. Then. Entering into the question as to um, what actually led me to to fight for the presidential post in the uh, just ended uh, SRC elections, um, I grew up as a person with passion, commitment, and conviction to save the students, and that passion actually led me uh, to say. Why can't I just get office? Because, you know, the problem uh, with the whatever office of authority that you may think of, uh, if you just go there, approach them to just seek a dialogue uh, pertaining to addressing whatever the problems, the obstacles that whosoever you are trying to represent is facing. If you are not given the mandate to lead, if you are not given yeah, the room to represent through an election, then most probably those that are actually in authority we will never listen to you so i just decided to say ah why can't i justify for this post and you know the support from the people that actually let me saying the same was so much overwhelming to the extent that i was convinced that why can't i run if i run it's very obvious that i'm going to win the post as i did okay all right mm, that's interesting that's interesting and um, you mentioned that you have a track record as a student activist and student rights defender. Uh, can you just highlight some of the things that you have done in the past year? Uh, as you have fought that battle for the students? Well, starting from student activism, I think, you know, we do have a lot of hiccups, a lot of problems, a lot of obstacles a lot of conundrums, a lot of riddles that the students are facing, not only at institutional level, not only at the University of Zimbabwe, but in the entire country. We have been facing issues to do with school fees. We did our best before we got elected into office to try to approach different administration of different tertiary institutions that we do here in Zimbabwe. We approached the University of Zimbabwe. We approached the Arare Poly. We approached the, uh, the Arare Institute of Technology. We have done a lot. We have approached the ministry. We have approached the, uh, the minister of higher and tertiary education, Professor Amon Morira, to say, look, uh, the students are not even affording to pay whatever the fees that the institution are actually paying. Why can't we have modalities that we can put in place so that you will never barricade any students who may think of wishing to come to school? Why the constitution is very clear in accordance to section 75. Education is a fundamental right. No one should be, you know, uh, have a room closed for him or her to go to school simply because the person is actually failing to, 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 to get uh, whatever the tuition fee that the institutions are charging. We have done that diplomatically. Sometimes the diplomatic uh, attempts that we have tried to put in place failed. We have engaged into demonstrations 
though sometimes other people regarded it, it to be something that is unconstitutional but we then asked what unconstitutional provision that you are talking about because the national constitution is very clear according to section 59 that every citizen you know he has a right to petition and demonstrate so these are the some of the efforts that we have tried to put in place before we got elected into office um you know during the election period some people uh were asking what are the duties of an src president and uh in fact the whole src what is their purpose at a university because at a university we know we have the, the chancellor and his team and various departments and things that are actually running affairs what do the src actually do well i think to those who have been asking that question should first understand what src uh, simply means since SRC is an abbreviation. SRC is a student representative council. So the main duty of an SRC president, the main duty of an whole SRC is simply to represent the interests of the students in whatever circle. Should any, pro, any, any student comes along with whatever the problem he, he or she is facing, that issue is the one that I personally, as the president, I, together with my other elected uh, members who are part of the SRC, are going now to take to the administration to say, look, these students are facing these problems. Why can't we address them? Why can't we address them through this and that way? If they fail, then that's when we, you know, it's not about, <laughs> I think I have to make this clear. You know, the problem with people, not people as such, students, in fact, you have this tendency of just believing that as an SRC, uh, you are just there to represent them and whatever the problems that they are bringing out to you are going to be to be addressed but you know since i'm a representative a representative is someone who is just given a mandate to do whatever a certain task that he or she is are uh, given by the same people that is elected him or here so it's about you know efforts that are put in place collective efforts gathered together to say we are having this problem i'm just a mouthpiece of whatever the problems that the students are facing but we can just you know form a quorum constitute a whole team to say these problems should be addressed in this particular way and again one of the other duty of the src president other duty of the whole src team is to you know to see to sit in different uh you know uh meetings with the administration team in decision making the decision that affects the welfare of the students these are the main uh mandate that an SRC president and the whole SRC team have okay and, and and as you step into office right now what are your immediate priorities we do have a lot of our uh, priorities my brother but the most immediate ones is to make sure that whosoever who wants to, you know, come to a varsity uh, uh, tertiary institution should do so without any barricades. You know, I've been talking this uh, before that we have a lot of students who are actually deferring. Why? Because they are not affording uh, to pay for school fees why can't we have modalities with the institution why can't we have modalities with the ministry why can't we have modalities with the different banks that we do have in zimbabwe so that students can just come to school uh, you know and, and, you know i uh, sorry to cut you off but aren't you being a bit over ambitious you know because as school schools teacher institutions they are actually organizations that have what used to be and um mandates that they have and that require the money so how, what is actually the plan that you have what would you propose they go about it well thank you before do you know the bill that the university of zimbabwe pays by the way mm, no i don't you don't know yes. so most of the things that you can you can include into that bill are mostly subsidized by the government the government has the role to make sure that the students goes to tertiary institution you know by whatever means so it's high time that you know we consider issues to do with grants i'm not saying we have to go to school for free we can't go to, to school for free because there are a lot of costs that are involved in running the institution why can't we have modalities with banks so that loans can be you know 
can be processed out to students so that they can go to school but that can be only done if there is a government end it's high time that we engage the government so that we make sure that modalities take place this is something that can be done it's not something that is difficult it's not something that is complex it's something that the people that are there the people that were there were failing to execute because of ignorance okay that, that's that's um that's very insightful that's really 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 insightful and so uh besides the the, the immediate priorities which you just stated what are some of the long-range objectives uh that you have in your manifesto and what uh the steps that you're going to take to achieve them you know it's high time that <laughs> that also has to answer to the issues to do with fees that i was talking about you know we have a students union building in the university of Zimbabwe. that building is for students but there are a lot of businesses that are taking place in that building um which are actually benefiting the administration not the students yet the students are the sole owners of that building so it's high time that we put whatever uh modalities that have to be taken in place uh, to together the administration so that we claim it back to the students so that whatever the business activities that we now have to run in that uh building is going to benefit the students in whatever way it's some of the you know some of the empowerment programs that we now have to give to students we do have a lot of rooms in those in that in that same uh building which are not up for use why can't we just rent them out so that whatever the money that we are getting is now going to be channeled to the students so that we improve the welfare of the students we have issues to do with uh, accommodation crisis at the university of zimbabwe currently each room is accommodating only one student yet we have someone who is coming from dotito we have someone who is coming from zarabani we have someone who is coming from zokomba we have someone who is coming from mudzi we have someone who is coming from uh, nyadire who doesn't have a relative who stays in harare that person is in dire need of accommodation in the university of zimbabwe why can't we you know why can't we just have modalities whereby the institution just instead um, a position and a policy whereby each room has to accommodate uh to students but also not forgetting that in the long run they have to reconstruct new other hostels they also have to make sure that whatever uh the sanitation in those hostels are up to lead you know it's very fun it's very sad at the same time that the investor of zimbabwe is regarded to be the most prestigious invest in the in the country but the safest delivery that the students are getting at the institution are very you know are very sarcastic you can't you you can't uh, make a distinction you can't dis- Di- differentiate you can't uh, make a, a difference between the lives that the students and investors of Zimbabwe are, are living with the lives that the people at Kuruba are living it's high time that we have to make education a pri- priority how do we do so we just do so through different mechanism that can improve the welfare of the students it's possible if only ignorance is not at place yes, yes. okay and um, he, now the, I, I, let me bring you to a very 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 interesting topic um about the election the currently ended election how would you describe uh the institutions handling of the election my brother you know there are perceptions in politics not only at national politics level but also in student politics level so if you are just you know if you are just known to be a person who supports whatever party that you support that on its own is a barricade to 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 winning the election by such uh, a a candidate i can tell you there were a lot of plots uh, you know to bar me from contesting from the same election starting from the nomination you know i have like what i've been telling you i was always there saving students and while this we were saving students some of the scars some of the bruises of saving the students is ending up being arrested at police if you get arrested and then go to court so i do have a uh, one pending course uh, court case at, at, at the court of law whereby we demonstrated the investor of zimbabwe after the institution is just you know uh, wake up uh, earlier in the morning to just you know instead a, a school fees increment without the consultation with the students so i was arrested we went to court so the the the, the, the matter is still within the court of law so the administration was trying to hinder me from contesting because they know my radical part as a student activist you know the type of uh, student politics that i am 
thinking and wishing to bring the investors of Zimbabwe is that type of politics whereby we have diplomatic engagements. But if they fail, you know, radicalism is all, also a way to, to, to also consider other things moving smoothly. Mm -hmm. So okay, okay. I, I was, I was, I, they were trying to hinder me from contesting, saying, ah, you have a pending uh, so, court so, case. So, so, Yet can, I can don't I, have any conviction you know, can, 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 can I get some uh, introspect on this? So you are actually saying that in a way, the University of Zimbabwe had a, their own preferred result that they wanted. In the, by yes, that's been always the case since the school opened. Since the school started uh, running SRC and elections. So these elections are just more of a formality. You can't for them. Uh, to them, it's yes. a formality. But to the students, it's not a formality because the students know what they want. Mm -hmm. The students know that uh, the, the type of leadership that they want at the institution. Mm -hmm. And that type of leadership is now the one that I'm the face of. Yes. And, and you know, you mentioned something about uh, being known to support a certain political party. Yes, its own connotations when it comes to the university. And which brings me to this um, notion that Zinasu, which you represent, yes. is aligned to the um, Citizens' Convergence for Change, the CCC, right? Is that a reality or it's not? My brother, Zinasu was formed in 1997. Uh, the CCC, whatever you may want to consider it, was formed in 2020, to this year. Yes. Uh, the MDC, you know, the MDC that ended up being the MDC, TMDC Alliance, whatever the case could be, was formed in, on 11 September 1999. So that brings to the issue that Zinasu is not, you know, aligned to whatever political party that may think of. Procedureship, they were seen endorsing you as a candidate and even your campaign material. It borrowed colors and even slogans. You know, there was Chipoi Chete Chete, which was almost similar to Chamisa Chete Chete. You know, let me get it. <laughs> let me be blunt to that fact. You can't deny it. Personally, you as a journalist, you can't deny the fact that the Triple C political party <laughs> is uprightly thinking uh, members, <laughs> number one. You can't <laughs> deny the fact that in Triple C, yes, as, a, as an organization, it is people that support democracy. And by so doing, you can't you can't hinder anyone from supporting you, number one. Yes. Plus, as leaders, you don't choose uh, supporters. Yes. Supporters choose, choose you. Yes, yes, yes. Again, I can't, you, of course, as, 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 as an individual, I do have a political party that I support. And that to me, it's, to anyone, it's not a secret. I support Triple C. That's a fact. But trying to link Zinasu to Triple C is a, is a blunder. Mm. But trying to link Zikosu to Zano PF is not a blunder. Oh, okay. Because, okay. because, because on individual capacity, on union capacity, I never got any support from anyone in the Triple C movement. The only support that I got from them was emotional support, emotional solidarities, and online, you know, support that they've been giving to me. I never got any pecuniary from those from that leadership. I never got any materialistic resources to support and fund my campaign. Why? Because I just believe in autonomy. I believe in independence. Okay. It's, Unlike it's, Zanu PF. Yes. Unlike Zanu PF. I can authoritatively claim that the election that was at the University of Zimbabwe was not an election that was in between me together with my union against Zikos, but it was an election that was in between myself together with my union and Zano PF. And I can tell you without any blingers that at University of Zimbabwe, we ran against Zano PF and we defeated Zano PF. Okay. All right. And um, you know that you mentioned it. You said you did not receive any materialistic uh, support from the triple which C, is a fact which is a fact yes um i just wanted to ask you since your nomination uh, up to election have you received any donations or endorsements from any groups and individuals you know we have a lot of people <laughs> that are in, but that are both in the in the in the triple c movement that are in the civic space that are in the journalism i can tell you uh Wopo Chingono endorsed me why because Wopo Chingono knows that i'm a progressive citizen i'm a progressive student who doesn't want corruption at whatever level because corruption doesn't only start at national level corruption starts in these lower ranks of student politics yes 
So, hope what you want to endorse me. Fazai Mayere, the spokesperson of the Triple C, endorsed me. Uh, Ostalos Gift to Ziba endorsed me. I also have another leaders from different uh, civic organizations who endorsed me. But the reason of their endorsement is not coming out as a fact that I support whatever political party. But it came out as a result of them knowing and fully understanding that I'm a progressive citizen. I'm a progressive uh, student. I'm a student who can also champion the need for change in whatever the systems that we might have at the institution, change in what terms, change in whatever the handling of the affairs of the of the of the students that you that was used to be there. We now need you know a new trajectory, a new way in way in, in which our student politics is is, is is taking place. So it was not about whatever the linkages that people just dream in their in their in their nice to say I was endorsed because of what I never received any financial support. I just received online solidarities. Okay, and um, you know because some of your detractors they were arguing that you won um, out of um, you know because of the endorsement from these various leaders that you actually mentioned at uh, the triple C leadership some of your detractors were saying that those are the people you want out of water empathy the people who aligned uh with who align with those leaders voted for you now as a person as you mr alan Chipoy, what are the competencies that you possess that you think make you a good leader commitment being um in a leadership that is always to students is what actually led me to be the president of the SRC at the investors bar so i think you know i never won the election because of endorsements from anyone because anyone who endorsed me was never part of the voting panel the people that actually voted in the election are the students you know the efforts that have been trying to put in place as a as, as an activist to make sure that whatever the problems that the students are facing are addressed is actually coming as a result of my efforts, not the efforts of anyone who is in the triple C. When I demonstrated against the physics at the investors in Zimbabwe, there was no triple C leader who was there. So for one to just claim that I won, of course I got the endorsements and I'm very much happy about those endorsements, but they never worked to, for me to become the SRC president. What actually worked, worked for me is just the efforts that have actually put in place before uh, running into office as an SRC president. And um, so now you, you and your, the team that you were elected with and you as the leader, how uh, will you develop measurable criteria for your committee? You know, uh, this day I, uh, I had uh, a meeting with the other people that were elected. You know, in as much as uh, we are coming from Sinasu and some some are coming from Zikosbo, a minor, a minor group is actually coming from there. Um, but we just, you know, we just sat down to say, guys, whatever the student political movement that we're backing us, let us now just you know progress very well without we are we we have we have been actually elected to represent the students not the unions where we are actually coming from we have been elected to make sure that there is progress in terms of student representation at the campus level so we sat down and say guys we are now allocating portfolios we are the one who is actually dealing with this portfolio we are the one who is actually dealing with this portfolio and we are yet to sit again to say under your portfolio these are the things that we are actually expecting you to do and we are expecting you to do in this so much time frame so that we can be that leadership that only got into office for the sake of you know our personal gains we are here to deliver and the delivering is what we are going to do okay that's um i'm impressed because you know i've been a student myself and i during my four years uh, at college i managed I, I, to, to 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 learn under both leadership from sikosu and from zinasu and from my personal experience mm. when these student leaders most of them regardless of party from what i got yes. when they were elected 
things don't seem to actually change year after year you know nothing has actually changed now let's talk about um a couple of student concerns that uh, even though they exist in the minority you are most likely uh, gonna have to be confronted by them so i just wanted to understand as well as the people listening out there uh, what uh, your stance are on certain issues and one of these issues is an issue that has been making waves uh, online and somehow globally about abortion you know what's your take on abortion and making abortion easily access accessible uh, for tertiary students you know <laughs> abortion is a crime against humanity and as a student leader despite which which organization you are coming from that should not be tolerated you know we have at the university of zimbabwe we have a clinic that is actually offering condoms, that are offering whatever, the, 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 the contraceptive pills, they are actually there. We also have another, you know, organizations like Sewati, we also, so I don't understand what will actually lead someone to just, you know, have unprotected sex to the extent that you then realize, um, the consequences later the extent that you just believe abortion is, is is the best way out it's something that has not to be tolerated and it's something that we don't tolerate and it's something that shall never be tolerated it's something that is actually a wrongdoing against humanity and, and you know still on on, uh, on women's issues what moves will you and your team make in ensuring that um women sanitation in id you know recently there's been a lot of awareness on how difficult it is for a lot of women including some in tertiary institutions and i believe some had used it in accessing sanitary work well thank you i also strongly believe that as a student leader you know in src president to that effect <laughs> i may i'm a revolutionary machine to deal with whatever the concerns that the students are actually facing. But also not forgetting that we do have a different portfolios. We have the portfolio of gender and social welfare. I'm very so much pretty sure that the person that we have elected, that we have actually uh, given the, that portfolio is going to deliver to his best demands that will save the interests of the students. But also not forgetting that we should always have running water in our hostels. This is a very major concern and I addressed it in my manifesto as well as running for office. You know, the water supply at the University of Zimbabwe is there. But to my own surprise, there will be no water at, at, at 8 a.m. in the morning at the institution. Why can't we, you know, <laughs> yet we have, um, especially these ladies, they might have uh, lectures at 10 o'clock. But they have to bath so that they will go uh, to the lectures. It's something that has to be taken into consideration. We can't com compromise hygiene. We can't compromise the sanitation of the students over whatever matters. Sanitation and hygiene, health is a fundamental right. It's something that has to be taken into consideration. Okay. All right. All right. And, um, you know, um, with the current inflation and the whole economic constraints that the whole country is facing, which is actually making it a challenge for a lot of people to pay um, to pay fees on on time, which is something we talked about in the beginning, and it also means that um, the institution struggles uh, on service delivery, regardless of what you said earlier about the need to have the government subsidizing on most of the things. Um, how do you intend to reach a compromise and balance on that? What is their plan, my brother? Uh, the effects of inflation comes as time goes because if you are to look at the type of inflation that we are having in Zimbabwe, it's not just affecting once and then it just uh, disappears. It's an inflation that is increasing, increasing, increasing as time goes on. But you would, you would realize that whenever we are about to pay our school fees, before we open the institution, we pay our school fees. So in terms of whatever the necessities the institutions want, starting from issues to do with food that they feed the students with they just bought them at one time so that fact on its own would debunk the effect of inf uh, inflation in terms of compromising the standards of whatever the service delivered that we are getting at the institution we also have issues to do with economies of scale the university of zimbabwe doesn't buy 
uh, 20 kgs of sugar uh, for, for, for to feed the students. They, 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 they try their best to make sure that they bought, they, they buy whatever the quantities that they may need as they run throughout the team. So that on its own is enough for the institution to try their best out of whatever the minimum resources that is actually are available to make sure that they will give a maximum utilization of such to make to to to, to probably debunk issues to do with uh, safe delivery. All right. And um, what is your viewpoint on on student uh, affairs management? And you as an individual, what approach do you take when making uh, big picture decisions? Well, <laughs> I'm a socialist. <laughs> I'm a socialist. You know, I just believe that I, I, I'm wearing a suit because I'm in India. But if you, you are to, to, to just visit me at the University of Zimbabwe, you will see me wearing uh, uh, slopes and probably my work suit for Zinas. Why? Because I don't have, the student doesn't have. Why? Because our parents who are actually civil servants are getting nothing as their monthly salaries. They can't afford anything. So in whatever the decision that has to be taken into consideration by the administration, by the SRC, they must know that the type of people they, they are actually dealing with have nothing on offer in terms of having financial resources. This is my type of leadership. Okay. And, uh, you know, as, as we are about to close up, um, I would like to ask you, um, outside of um, your current position and your post in, in Zinas, which I take you are... In Zinas, you are the, the I'm the provincial chairperson yes. for, for Arari 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 yeah. Yes. Do you have any political aspirations? And, you know? Uh, politics. Political aspirations might be there, but devouching your plans to the enemy you know, we are dealing, you know, we are dealing with such type of conundrum regime. We are dealing with such a type of a government that is always trying to attack whosoever who is a, a big head in terms of addressing whatever the problems that we are facing at national level. I might have them, but uh, they have to be kept at, at, at a very low stage so that, you know, I won't be fought. Even when, whenever I, I, I think of uh yes uh oh, those political aspirations you can be only fought by the people that are outside whatever the movement that uh, that is against you but yours can also fight you but political aspirations might be there yes you know and and, and now that you have mentioned it um, how, how did your parents take it you know for when, when you started uh, being a student activist and what you know i'm speaking from experience i've i've been an activist myself and you know me i was raised by, by my grandparents they were she cried when she saw me wearing a, a, a the t-shirt for a particular opposition party you know she cried she it's so like, sad my, my 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 son you are my one and only you are about to lose your life because of this stop this how did you take it how did it's they high take time it? that we change a narrative we change the trajectory of national politics in our country you know the constitution is very clear. I support whatever movement that 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 I want. No one should be, uh, you know, ever forced to support other other movements that I don't even feel like supporting. So, with with my 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 case now, it's a different one. Um, you you recall the two zero zero eight uh, post election atrocities that were there in the Congress. Um, it's very unfortunate that you know. My parent, my mother, a specific dad, was a victim to such. My, my, my myself, at a tender age of eight years, was also a victim to such. To the extent that we used to shun our home, to sleep in the river, when 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 the regime was trying to look for uh, for for my mother. So that on its own is a vendetta that uh, that actually uh, grew up in me. To the extent that I told myself. At a very tender age, that if I don't do politics, politics will do me. If I don't engage myself into, you know, trying to to, to provide uh, whatever type type of leadership that I believe best suits uh, whatever the situation that we are facing in our country, then I will end up complaining about other people that are just taking up spaces uh, in those political circles to say, ah, this is not what we want. But where I, am I? I should be also at the forefront to just say, ah, 
whatever that is happening is not right and i should give a voice that speaks to such to the extent that you know my parents were never were never were never worried about me when i got into politics because they actually knew uh that this is where i was actually going to so it's a different case with yours Oh, I, I, I get it, and and I really appreciate that you you had a support system that actually understood the journey that you were moving and and where you're going. And now, um, as we, you know, before we close, I would like to ask your opinion on something, um, which is this this is now you as an, like you said earlier that you support the triple C as a young, uh, as a young man who supports the triple C, and as we go towards the general election that is coming next year. What do you think? Um, what, are, in fact, what are you prepared to do as a young man to ensure that you defend the vote for the party that you support? And what would you encourage fellow young men uh, to do? Well, uh, I think it should to do with the national website that is there in the 2023. Um, it's high time that we mobilize fellow youth, fellow students, so that they take part in the voter registration process that is ongoing, number one. Number two, it's high time that we also have to do whatever that it takes so that we influence other students so that they can be also ambassadors of spreading the register to vote weight. Number three, it's also high time that whenever 2023 comes, whenever the election date comes, it's high time that everyone has to go and vote. Number four, it's also high time that on the day of voting, on the polling uh, casting date, the youth, whatever that we are doing is within the confines and the parameters of the constitution to defend the vote it's no longer that time way by you know they can't you know they can arrest us but they can't arrest everybody they can shoot us but they can sh they can never shoot everyone it's item that you know there is power in numbers there is power in numbers if we mobilize 10 we will be arrested we will be brutalized everything will be done to us but if we mobilize thousand 10 people will never do anything to us it's high time that we mobilize our fellow, uh, you know, fellow youth. It's high time that we 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 we, we conscientize them. It's high time that we have to let them know that they should not be afraid of anything. There is nothing that can frighten them out there. It's only that a, a certain narrative has been created, and people are actually made to believe it. It's not there. We can probably win if we mobilize, if we defend the vote, and if. Not you can't also defend the vote that is not that has not been casted. You can mobilize this, the, 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 the the people to to register the vote. You can also mobilize them to vote. You can also mobilize them to defend the vote. You know, <coughs> police the, the, the number of police officers, the number of um, army officers, and nothing is compared to our numbers as as as, 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 as civilians. Yes. And you know the collective power of civilians. You know is way 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 far ahead that of army and police it's high time that we mobilize our generation to do whatever that it takes to have a voice of the generality take reign yes. okay ladies and gentlemen that was uh, alan chipoy the recently elected um src president for the university of zimbabwe uh thank you sir for sparing us um your time uh, from a busy schedule to talk to us about a lot of matters concerning the recent election and a lot of other things um as we wrap up do you have anything that you want to say to the people i think you've actually preempted everything but just to to, to cement one youth out there should register to vote youth out there should be ambassadors of the register to vote with youth out there should be at the forefront of going to vote on the election date. Youth out there should be at the forefront to defend the vote. Thank you so much for having me as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.